Okay. Thank you, Johnny, for the invitation. It's, as Johnny said, it's a real pleasure to be here uh, after all those years <clears throat> because I spent several years working with in Johnny's lab, and that was a very fruitful and challenging time. Uh, so it's really a great pleasure to come back here to Fiesta. To start, let me go uh, through some uh, concepts on P53 that most of you may know. Uh, P53 is one of the most studied tumor suppressors. It was uh, originally identified as a, me, as a transcription factor acting as a tetramer that uh, binds specific uh, elements on DNA. Later on, alter, uh, other transcription dependent uh, functions were also uh, dis uh, discovered, and all of these activities contribute to the P53 function. P53 is at the central hub of a complex signaling pathway that senses different inputs and activates a wide range of responses that goes from reversible subcycle arrays to senescence and apoptosis. And uh, the function of P53 as a tumor suppressor was clearly demonstrated in pioneering work that showed that showed that lack of P3, even of one allele, leads to a dramatic uh, decrease in survival um, that is uh, characterized by an early onset of tumorigenesis and high tumor burden and penetrance. According to this role, P53 is considered to be the most frequently mutated gene in human cancer, but unlike other tumor suppressors, uh, Around 75% of the mutations are of the missense type that lead to the accumulation to high levels of uh, mutant uh, point in mutant proteins. Mutations, mutations are uh, accumulated on the DNA binding domain, and as a consequence, they eliminate the function as a, as a transcription factor. So these mutations lead to the loss of the tumor suppressor activity of uh, WALT53. However, they also allow the protein to gain novel activities that actively cooperate with uh, tumorigenesis and uh, contribute to the development of aggressive tumors characterized by high metastatic frequency and genomic instability. In this way, one single mutation transformed one of the most potent tumor suppressors in an oncoprotein. Mouse models provided compelling evidence of, on this gain of function activity by comparing tumors with mutant P53 with tumors devoid of P53. Despite these clear aggressive phenotypes, the understanding of the mechanisms of mutant P53 function proved to be more difficult. In the last 10 years, in an increasing number of papers have documented mutant P3 gain of function and provided valuable hints on its mechanisms. The, the emerging picture shows mutant P3 as a pleiotropic factor that disturbs cell physiology by interacting with several different protein partners. For example, it may bind and inhibit the, the tumor suppressor function of P63 and P73, the other members of the family, by binding MRE11, it may inhibit DNA, uh, DNA damage response. And most surprisingly, even though mutant 53 has lost its function as a canonical transcription factor, it has a profound effect on gene expression, most, uh, most likely by binding different transcription factors such as CMYK, NRF2, or SREBPs. Chinese lab has made significant contributions in this field in the last years that allowed us to understand mutant 53 as a protein that activates different responses to cope with the stress imposed to tumor cells, such as mutant deprivation, prototoxic stress, DNA damage, and a hostile microenvironment. Several decades of research on P3 has now made clear that the presence of different P53 proteins severely uh, conditions tumorigenesis. For example, similar work from several years ago showed that uh, restoration of WALT-AP53 leads to complete tumor clearance. 
highlighting the possibilities of therapeutic strategies that reactivate wild type functions. More recently, mouse models shown that tumors become addicted to the presence of mutant P53 and that eliminating mutant P53 may increase survival, providing a proof of principle for thera therapies aimed to induce mutant P53 degradation. Our group is interested in mechanisms of aggressiveness related to the P53 pathway. In the last years, we identified some genes related to cell metabolism that we show to be regulated by mutant 53 proteins. As ICMT, which catalyzes the last step of the perennialization pathway, and AKR1B1, which reduces aldehydes, organic aldehydes, uh, by consuming that pH. As for example, in the first step of the polio pathway that transforms glucose into fructose. First thing, I'm going to focus on our work on ICMT. The perennialization pathway starts with the addition of isoprenoids to a cysteine present in the C-terminus of target proteins, typically farnesyl or ger geranial geranial. These proteins become associated with the cytoplasmic side of the endoplasmic reticulums, where the last amino acids following the cysteine are removed creating a new C-terminus with cysteine. Finally, ICMT catalyzes the methylation of the cysteine, eliminating the negative charge and providing a highly hydrophobic C-terminus, which allows interaction with other cell membranes and regulates interaction with other protein partners. The isoprenoids are synthesized by the mevalonate pathway from acetyl-CoA thereby connecting the metabolic status of the cell with the regulation of a protein network with key roles in cell behavior, such as Rho and ras gtpases that has been deeply involved in uh, oncogenic mechanisms. Following some uh, global gene expression analysis, we identified ICMT as a gene potentially induced by mutant P53. To study this, we use several cell lines that express endogenously different P53 point mutants and do not express wild type P53. These cell lines, upon down regulation of P53, mutant P53, we found that ICMT mRNA levels were reduced, as well as ICMT protein levels, as shown by Western blood. We then clone. ICMT promoter absent of the luciferase gene to generate a reporter and perform luciferase assays on H1299 cells, which do not express P53. Upon transfection of several different point mutants, we found that the promoter activity was enhanced. Since all of these experiments were performed in the absence of wild P53, they also show that this is a gain of function activity of mutant P53. Our first thought was that P63 may be involved. The P3 family is composed by P3, P63, and P73. And the P63 gene may produce several different isoforms, which can be classified into TA full length uh, uh, isoforms containing the transactivation domain and delta N isoforms lacking this domain. The isoforms uh, have tumor suppressive functions. In similar luciferase assays, we found that upon transfection of the AP63, the ICMT promoter was repressed. This was counteracted by the presence of delta NP63 and also by the presence of mutant P53. Since TAP63 and wild type 3 share some target genes, we also analyzed the effect of wild type 3 in this promoter. And we were surprised to find a strong repression on the promoter activity, which was also uh, prevented by the presence of mutant 53, which continued to induce the promoter when transfected alone. So at this point, we decided to concentrate on the effect of wild type 53 We first performed promoter mapping study 
by generating different reporters with deletions. We found that the repressive effect was still present when we delete a 2000 base pair fragment, but it was lost when a fragment of 200 base pairs near the transcription start site was uh, lacking. We also performed chromatin immunoprecipitation experiments where we found that YKP53 was recruited on the promoter on this region. Finally, we wanted to confirm that while the endogenous YTP3 was able to regulate ICMT expression, so we treated different cell lines with natlin, which is an inhibitor of the interaction between PC3 and the E3 ligase and the N2, and prevents protosomal degradation. And we found that upon stabilization of Walter P3 in different cell lines, ICMT protein levels were reduced, confirming the negative effect on ICMT expression. We then decided to perform similar analysis of mutant P3. When we perform promoter mapping, we found that the positive effect on the promoter was already lost when we deleted a fragment that was present 1,000 base pairs upstream of the transcription at star site, very far away from the region uh, identified as responsible for the wild by effect, effect, which is uh, downstream. We confirmed this, these results by generating new reporter where we only deleted the 200 base pair fragment responsible for the wild type P3 effect. And we found that in the CPRS essays, the absence of this fragment didn't uh, affect the positive effect of mutant P53 and the promoter. When we performed the chromatin immunoprecipitation experiments, we found that uh, mutant P3 was recruited on the promoter on the upstream side, the upstream region, but was not present on the downstream region. Altogether, these results show that mutant and wild P3 affect different regions of, on the promoter, most likely by different mechanisms. So su summarizing this part, we believe that in normal cells, ICMT expression is under stringent control by wild type 3 The presence of mutant 3 promotes ICMT expression by counteracting the repression of wild type 3 But mutant 3 may further increase ICMT expression by acting through a gain of function mechanism on another region of the, of the promoter. And the repression by, by TAP3 may also be counteracted by mutant 3 dominant negative effect, and also by the presence of delta MP63. So during tumor progression, alteration of the P53 pathway uh, should promote ICMT overexpression. So we wonder whether if this overexpression may affect tumorigenesis. First, we performed some in vitro experiments. We overexpressed ICMT several cell lines where we observed a neat localization on the endoplasmic reticulum. We didn't find any difference, significant difference in proliferation, but we found that upon ICMT overexpression, <coughs> Clonogenic capacity in colony formation assays was increased. This also encouraged us to test the effect of this protein in vivo. So we took advantage of an orthotopic model of breast cancer. We generated 41 triple negative breast cancer and urine cells, where we overexpress ICMT as a fusion with GFP. And we injected these cells in the fat pad of uh, female biopsy mice. We found a slight but significant increase in tumor volume in cells overexpressing ICMT. But more interesting, we found a clear increase in the number of metastases in the lungs. So you can see here as macrometastases, which are these white dots on the lungs stained with India ink. In agreement with this uh, aggressive phenotype, we also found a dramatic decrease in e adherent upon ICMT overexpression, and the opposite was found when we treated cells with, uh, with an ICMT inhibitor. 
this result show that ICMT overexpression promotes metastasis in vivo. To further understand this effect, we performed some in vitro experiments. We first confirmed that ICMT overexpression enhanced invasion in transwell invasion assays in H1299 cells and 41 cells. And, and since tumor cells heavily rely on actin cytoskeleton for migration and invasion, we turn our attention to this subject also because rogitpases, which are ICMT substrates, uh, are key regulators of actin polymerization. Then we perform immunofluorescence analysis, staining uh, polymerized actin with phalloidin, and we found that upon ICMT overexpression, a clear change in some morphology was observed with giving more rounded cells and suggested alterations in uh, actin cytoskeleton. We concentrated on invalopolia, which are acting structures that promote invasion and metastasis. Nucleation of invalopolia starts with the polymerization of actin induced by cortactin on the ventral surface of cells in contact with the extracellular matrix. So we to, to identify invalopolia, we look for co-localization between uh, F-actin stained with phalloidin and cortactin staying with a with a specific antibody. Here on the top, you can see an XY confocal representative confocal plane where the co-localization is observed in cells that were plated on matrigel. But in order to uh, ident clearly identify, correctly identify in Balopodia, we perform uh, an image reconstruction on, along the set axis to get an orthogonal view where we, where we could uh, identify in Vadopodia as a colocalization in the ventral surface of the cell that are in contact with matrigel. This way we quantified in Vadopodia and we found that ICMT overexpression enhanced uh, in Vadopodia formation in H599 cells and the opposite was observed upon ICMT inhibition. And we found even a more clear effect uh, of ICMT overexpression in 41 cells. The lipolia are uh, dynamic structures with the kind of assembled and disassembled. And uh, they are also uh, signaling platforms that show proteolytic activity. So we wanted to test the effect on this activity. We perform uh, degradation assays by plating cells on a gelatin matrix conjugated to FITC fluorophore. Here we identify degradation foci as black holes on the, on the fluorescent matrix, the fluorescent matrix underneath the cells. In this way, we found that upon SMT inhibition, the number of degradation foci was markedly reduced. But since these structures are dynamic, we, we wanted to refine our results by counting, quantifying a uh, functional invalopodia. So we looked for invalopodia that were in the close proximity to degradation foci. As you can see in, in, those, in this image on the left and the right, where uh, we have an orthogonal view also made by an X set, uh, set axis reconstruction, where the gelatin matrix is, is shown in white pseudo color, and you can see here indicated by the arrow a degradation foci, where you, we can we could also find um, polymerase actin and protactin indicating the presence of an invalopolin. Quantifying this, we found that inhibition of ICMT also uh, produced a significant decrease in the number of functional invalopolin. Altogether, this result suggests that ICMT promotes metastasis by increasing the generation of valopodium. To understand the clinical relevance of ICMT overexpression, we look at uh, cancer patient databases, where we found that ICMT was overexpressed in almost all uh, cancer types analyzed comparing with normal tissue, 
including uh, lung and breast, but also prostate and pancreas. And then we wanted to look for correlation between ICMT expression and clinical outcome. We found that patients showing high levels of ICMT expression showed a trend to a reduced survival, which was not significant. We didn't find, we didn't find a significant correlation when we look for a contacting expression. However, when we consider patients on the basis of the expression of both genes simultaneously, protecting and ICMT, we found that patients with high levels of both genes show a significantly reduced survival, suggesting that these genes may be useful to identify patients at higher risk. So far, we believe that ICMT overexpression is a relevant alteration in human cancer that promotes the development of aggressive tumors. In normal conditions, what the 53 restrains this alteration, but upon P3 mutation, this safe mechanism is lost. It's interesting to note that what the P53 also inhibits the mevalonate pathway, down regulating the production of isoprenoids required for the perinylation pathway. In contrast, mutant P53 has been shown to enhance the ex expression of several mevalonate pathway genes, leading to overproduction of isoprenoids that may synergize with ICMT to alter the function of a network of proteins with key roles in tumorigenesis. These results and also the results from other groups uh, led us to propose ICMT as an interesting therapeutic target. However, at present, there are, uh, the ICMT inhibitors are not useful as pharmacological drugs because of solubility and toxicity problems. So we decided to look for new ICMP inhibitors. We generated derivatives of salicylate, which is salicylate, a molecule that was uh, originally identified in, in the 90s and was shown to have uh, uh, activity as ICMP inhibitor. We substitute the pharmacyl moiety for a different, a wide range of different structures. And we also generated some molecules, uh, adding a um, triazole linker in order to generate more vari variability. We test these compounds on viability assays in different cell lines, and we found some, uh, some active compounds. Like for example, compound five and compound 19, which outperform salicylate as antiproliferatives, and we also show that these compounds induce apoptosis in different cell lines. To understand if these compounds may, may bind, may, may bind uh, ICMT, we perform in silico docking analysis that show that compound 5 and 19 had uh, the lowest free energy, comparing also with salicylate and a model peptide that mimics ICMT substrates predicting that, that these compounds uh, should bind ICMT with higher affinity. When we performed viability assays on the non-tumorigenic cell line Vero, we found that for compound 19, IC50 values were markedly increased, suggesting that this compound may show higher selectivity for tumor cells. Uh, at present, we are uh, interested in uh, studying the effect of this compound, 19, on our in vivo model of metastasis and tumor development. And in the last minutes, I wanted to share with you some of our results on AKR1B1. To make it short, I will tell you that we showed that this gene is repressed by what IP3. Uh, breast cancer patients with high levels of AKR1B1 show a significantly reduced survival. And we decided to test the effect of the overexpression of this gene on metastasis and tumor development. So we generated 41 cells overexpressing this enzyme. We found that 
uh, overexpression and passive invasion on in vitro assays. And then we injected in the fat pad of vaccine mass, and we found a significant and clear increase in, tum in tumor volume. But also, most interestingly, we found a dramatic increase in the number of metastases in the lungs upon overexpression. Since this, is a, since this is a rather promiscuous enzyme that may reduce other substrate other than glucose, we decided to follow an unbiased strategy in order to understand the possible underlying mechanisms. So we perform a global proteomic analysis by mass spectroscopy. Here in the volcano plot, you can see the results. We found several significantly altered proteins, around 60 upregulated proteins and 40 downregulated proteins. And by performing a pathway enrichment analysis, we found that metabolic pathways was the was the most enriched, most significant enriched category. Looking at this category, we found several genes uh, that are localized in mitochondria. And by performing network analysis with the string database, a clear network came up containing several uh, several subunits of the ubiquinone oxidoreductase and also cytochrome oxidase suggesting that IKR 1v1 overexpression uh, enhances oxidative phosphorylation. Also looking at, at this category, we found some genes related to lipid metabolism. For example, we found as upregulated ECHS1, which is involved in beta oxidation of fatty acids in mitochondria. Accordingly, we found downregulated CBR4, which is involved in fatty acid synthesis in mitochondria, suggesting that overexpression of this enzyme promotes oxidation of fatty acids. We also found PN PLA2 as downregulated, which is a gene uh, involved in hydrolysis of triglycerides. Altogether, these results uh, indicate that IKR, AKR 1B1 of expression may have a strong effect on uh, lipid metabolism. Uh, preliminary results have shown that uh, overexpression of this enzyme enhances the formation of uh, lipid droplets. And I hope I will be telling you more new results in the near future. So to end, I would like to thank all the people involved in this work, especially Carla Borini, Carolina Di Benedetto, and Evelyn Arel Salazar from my group, which performed most of the experiments. And those are our collaborators, particularly Gianni, and also Herman Rosano from the Proteomic uh, Facility at Rosario, and Guillermo Lavadier, uh, who synthesized all the tire salicylates. Thank you very much.